Hello everyone. Today I am going to present my paper Susceptible Weighted Imaging An Effective Auxiliary Sequence That Enhances Insight into the Imaging of the Stroke. Coming to others, it's me, uh, Vinay Kumar, President, D.Y. Patil Medical College, and done under the guidance of Dr. Sanjay M. Kalatkar Sir. He is a professor, Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College, Pune. And next, uh, under Dr. Krishna Teja Sir, Assistant Professor, Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College, Pune. Mm-hmm. Coming to introduction, Hakai 1997 first proposed and patented SWI imaging, which was subsequently implemented after 2004 on commercial scanners. Susceptibility is an expression of paramagnetic components post hemorrhages like ferritin in hemocytin. The presence of these paramagnetic components result in deterioration of the MR signals from the tissue, suggesting an interpreter of the hemorrhagic incidence. It accentuates susceptibility differences in tissue showing acute hemorrhage, acute thrombus, deoxygenated blood in the vein, hemocytin, calcium and iron which exhibit susceptibility differences from the surrounding. Acute stroke can show acute thrombus, deoxygenated blood in the veins and acute hemorrhage and hence is helpful in stroke evaluation. It increases the conspicuity of the hemorrhage nearly six folds as compared to GRE. Hence, it should be included as part of routine imaging of the brain in stroke. Coming to the aim, aim is to evaluate the utility of the SWI sequences in stroke imaging and assess supplemental information provided by SWI in an acute stroke scenario, materials and methods, data collection and patient selection. This was a study performed in tertiary care center among 50 patients who presented with acute neurological symptoms such as limb weakness, loss of consciousness and sudden onset of severe headache. Image acquisition, a 3T, 3 Tesla MRI machine, Vida Simmons was used. Our routine brain protocol includes T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, flare in axial sections and the uh, diffusion weighted image, uh, apparent diffusion coefficient image, T1 weighted sagittal, T2 weighted coronal, MRV and MRA was done if indicated. <coughs> SWI sequence, image parameters were repetition time of 27 uh, milliseconds, time to echo 20 milliseconds, fractional anisotropy of 10 degrees, 1.8 mm slice thickness, the field of vision of 200 mm square, 270 seconds equation time. Image analysis. Experienced radiologists interpreted and evaluated all brain MRI images. On phase sequence of SWA, hemorrhage appears hyperintense and the calcification appears hypointense in the left handed system. Coming to the results, the brain MRI with SWA was up to, obtained in 50 patients. Out of the 50 patients, 32 were males and 18 were females. The majority of the age group was more than 60 years, followed by 50 to 60 years. The age ranged from 28 to 76 years and the majority of the patients were from the age group more than 60 years, that is 23%, followed by 51 to 60 years, that is 22%. Coming to the MRI findings, the site and location and distribution of the pathology. Most of the patients had bilateral pathology, 20 of them, followed by right side, 14 of them, and left side and 14 of them, and two involved the brainstem. The majority of the patient had supratentorial lesions, 34 people, followed by both supratentorial and infratentorial lesion, 11 patients, and 5 patients had infratentorial lesion. Among 50 patients, the majority of the patients had venous sinus thrombosis, 20 patients, and arterial stroke, 20 patients, followed by cerebral amyloid angiopathy, 5 patients, and 5 had uh, five, five other patients has hyperintensive microbial. This is the same table that was shown. Arterial stroke. In our study, among 20 patients with arterial stroke, the majority had middle MCA thrombosis and 10 fo- uh, had ACA thrombosis and 6 and posterior cerebral artery thrombosis in 3 and 1 patient had ICA thrombosis. This is the same represented in the table. Hemorrhagic transformation of the arterial stroke was seen in 18 patients. The distribution of the hemorrhage transformation of the infarct was MCA territory 9, ACA territory 5, PCA territory 5, ICA territory 1. Of these uh, 18 patients with hemorrhagic transformation of arterial infarct, infarct, 5 had macro hemorrhages and 13 had micro hemorrhages within the infarct areas. You can see the image here. Here you can see a well defined rounded hypointense area on the magnitude image appearing hyperintense on phase image 
that is seen in the right occipital region suggestive of micro hemorrhage a large area of diffusion restriction on dwi in corresponding low adc value is also seen this is an MC, uh, mca territory acute infarct with micro hemorrhage within the infarcted area in this image you can see an acute non hemorrhagic infarct in the left cerebral hemisphere showing diffusion restriction on dwi with corresponding low a, low adc values on magnitude image, the left anterior <laughs> inferior cerebellar artery appears hypointense and it appears hyperintense on face image, suggestive of acute thrombosis. The dark artery sign or the susceptibility sign was seen in three patients DWI, <coughs> uh, ADC, magnitude, face, and MR, MRA. Here you can see uh, the SWI shows, uh, in fact, in the left MCA territory with dark whistle sign in M3 and M4 branches of the right MCA, which was confirmed by MRA. You can see the positive here. Cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. Among the 20 patients with cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, the majority of the patients had hemorrhagic infarcts, 8 of them, followed by cortical venous thrombosis in 4 and venous sinus thrombosis in 8 cases. This is the same representing the tabular format. Here you can see the magnitude image, face image, SWI and MIP images where you can see uh, hypointense signals in the cortical veins in A and C image, in the bilateral frontoparietal region and left transfer sinus in E and G. And appearing hypointense on the magnitude and hyperintense on face images. Suggestive of cortical and ural venous sinus thrombosis. <clears throat> Correlation between CT and SWI. SWI was better as compared to CT in the detection of hemorrhagic venous sinus thrombosis. Hemorrhagic transformation of arterial infarct, cerebral amy amyloidopathy, uh, hypertensive, hypertensive, and micro hemorrhage. You can see the same uh, table that was described. Coming to the discussion, SWI imaging despite, uh, despite slow flowing blood in small cerebral vessels due to blood oxygen level dependent effect of deoxygenated hemoglobin, which is difficult to detect at the time of the flight and phase contrast magnetic resonance angiographic techniques. MIP helps in establishing continuity of the tortuous structures and has a venogram effect, thus differentiating veins from adjacent hemorrhage. Both Calcium and iron are commonly deposited substances in the brain. This distort the local magnetic field, producing a low signal on a SWI image, thus mimicking hemorrhage. Calcium can be differentiated from hemorrhage on face image, where the calcium appears dark and the hemorrhage appears bright. Iron is usually seen in the globus pallidus and substantia nigra. Acute thromboembolism has high iron content and, increase, and increases in deoxy hemoglobin content and hence is easily picked up on the SWI sequences. SWI has high sensitivity with better contrast resolution in the detection of thromboembolism in both the anterior and posterior circulation. The composition of the thromboembolism can vary. Eret thromboembolism that is erythrocyte rich predominantly consists of erythrocyte while er white thromboembolism composed of plate, uh, platelets, fibrin and enzromatous gruel. A red thrombus usually arises from the left atrium in the atrial fibrillation, while a white thrombus originates from vulnerable atherosclerotic plaques. Red thrombus usually has a higher level of paramagnetic content, so it causes blooming on SWI sequences with the diameter of the thrombus vessel exceeding the diameter of the contralateral normal vessel. Detection of the red thrombus of, is a prognostic importance as it is more sensitive to intravenous tissue plasminogen activated treatment with a better success rate of endovascular recanalization. SWI can detect distally located clots that may not be picked up on routine MRA. Thrombus is in particularly occluded vessel cannot be picked up in TOF or MRA, which shows narrow artery. SWI can pick up thrombus at the site of an occluded vessel, seen as dark vessel sign. SWI can pick up venous changes at the site of the infarct. Multiple prominent hypointense veins can be seen in the vicinity of the in fact, due to increased oxygen extraction with a resultant increased concentration of deoxyhemoglobin, this helps in protecting the tissue at the risk in the penumbra and has favorable outcome from the reperfusion strategy. In our study, among 20 patients with arterial stroke, the majority of the patients had MCA thrombosis followed by ACA-PCA thrombosis. 
Our findings were favorable uh, in favor of Bill Ward et al., where the SWI detected intra-arterial thrombus in 122 patients compared to 97 patients detected by MRI. Extravasated hemoglobin turns into deoxyhemoglobin, a paramagnetic material that produces inhomogeneity. SW can identify very minute hemorrhage within the infarct because it is extremely sensitive to magnetic field inhomogeneity. Our study found five patients each had each with <coughs> amyloid angiopathy, where you can see here the magnetic phase SW MIP images of the SW sequence shows hypo intense areas on the magnetic image. Hyperintense areas on the phase image in the bilateral temporal region suggestive of amyloid angiopathy. Our findings uh, corroborated the findings of Mittal et al. showing increased sensitivity of SWI to identify numerous microbleeds that otherwise go undetected on routine imaging. In our study, among 10 patients with venous sinus thrombosis, 7 had hemorrhagic infarct followed by cortical venous th uh, thrombosis and superior sagittal thrombosis. Our results are consistent with those of study of 39 patients with cerebral venous thrombi by Ibitbar et al. which showed that the sensitivity of SWA for detecting the clots in the sinuses was 96% and 71% between the day 1 and day 3. In our study, the correlation of CT with SWI detection of uh, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, microhemorrhage and cerebral amyloid angiopathy Pati showed better results with SWI as compared to CT with the statical significance. Our findings were collaborative with those of Mittal et al. Coming to conclusion, SWI is a useful imaging sequence that provides re relevant information in stroke patients and requires only an additional 3 to 4 minutes to perform. SWI can identify various features such as hemorrhage, intra-arterial thrombus, or concomitant microbleed. The detection of the microhemorrhage, which is better seen on SWI, is of prognostic value and affects therapeutic decision and the use of thrombolytics. In our study, detection of the CVST microhemorrhage and cerebral amyloid angiopathy showed better results with SWI when compared to CT. In conclusion, SWI is a simple, reliable, non-invasive imaging technique. SWI does not need the use of contrast medium and can be added as an auxiliary sequence in routine stroke protocol without much increase in the scan time. These are the references. Thank you.